Alrighty, it's been a minute since we've played some validate struggling singles in your area. Yes, yes. Not it's not just black pink that is in your area. Validate struggling singles is also in your area. Um, I also do have to acknowledge that this is a game that I got a key for. Um, so thank you so much to the devs. Um, last stream. It's been a while, but we did play as Inaya and we did a singular date. So I want to continue. Um, I want to continue playing as Inaya so that we can see their journey. So Inaya is 25, an original croissant dropper, stim blogger during the height of 2014 Bumbler. And they say blocking is the best way to win an argument, but that's just cowardice talking. Uh, yeah, they're Pakistani. Yeah, every character has their ethnicity also listed. I, I can't decipher the, um, whatchamacallit, the, their signs. However, uh, it says their age, it says everyone's pronouns, everyone's ethnicities, so really, really cool. I think, I think, yeah, I think, I think she is, um, a Taurus. Imhari is Virgo, okay. And then Malik is, what is the arrow? Is that Sagittarius? I literally don't know the little symbols. Yeah, on the on the game's website, there is like the full, cause this is only volume one. Um, I think they're releasing the game in like batches because there's a lot of characters. Um, and um, yeah, on the game's website, it shows you like the entire cast, everyone's pronouns, everyone's ethnicities. It's really, really good. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's play as Inaya. We have a date with Ashley. Ooh. Okay, Ashley. Y'all are gonna have to help me with these decisions, okay? Baking with a straight girl. Ooh. Okay, ableist language and harassment as far as content warning. So be safe, everyone. Love the content warnings. Predictably, you sleep through your alarm. You've been meaning to stop doing that for a while. Like, really working on getting your shit together and not immediately slamming the snooze button again and again like a reflex. You've been... Nope. You've seen influencers saying shit that you shouldn't rely on your phone for that. You should get an old school alarm clock and put it across the room and therefore force yourself to get up and walk across the room to turn it off. But that sounds like hell, actually. And it's not like you really have anything to get up for. You were late last night. You were up late last night, okay? Doing a normal thing, hanging out with someone at her apartment. Even if you did make a totally disastrous move on her, which maybe would have turned out okay if you hadn't just act like a total freak on her. <sighs> well, it could have been worse. Because from what she told you, she wasn't that into you. She was just going with the flow, which sucks. Anyway, after getting that awkwardness out of the way, Yolanda turned out to be cool. You watched some bullshit reality TV, which you typically hate, but with Yolanda it was fun. You get why people are into that stuff. The point is, you wake up at the crack of noon, feeling refreshed and ready to plan your next live stream. You grab your laptop from the floor beside your bed and tab over to your schedule. Well, you say schedule, it's just a text document full of a bunch of indecipherable notes and dates scribbled for when you think you might want to do a video. Whatever. The next thing on your list is Naki? I don't know how to say that. So sorry, babes. You could go for some... Naki? Seriously. Unfortunately, 
it seems you have fucked up. <laughs> you were hoping not to have to leave your apartment at all today, but you already know you're out of flour. Shit. Ooh, should we get some flour, honeys? Or should we make something else? What do y'all think? What is Naki? Thank you for confirming that I was saying it right. <laughs> Even a broken clock is correct sometimes. Yeah, I love the content warnings for each scene. I, I wish more games were like that. It's not that difficult to do it either, I would assume. E not even in the game, like, you could just do it in, like, the, like, whatever, however you purchase the game, you know what I mean? Oh, it's like a dumpling, potato pasta. Oh, all right, I want it. All right, Fergie said something else. Let's do something else. You decide to make something else. You don't need flour. There's a hundred other things you could make. Is what you tell yourself before you spend about 10 minutes just staring blankly into your fridge. <laughs> Ugh. No matter what, you end up deciding you're going to end up missing at least a couple things. You might as well head to the grocery store anyway. Well, great. Our decision did not matter whatsoever. Grocery shopping. Flour really should be one of those universal constants. You really shouldn't be able to run out of flour. It should really be a renewable resource, like water. There should be a flour cycle where the flour gets used, goes into the atmosphere, and then comes back down from the clouds as more flour. You really want that knock... Naki? I already fucked up. You would want that though, so you begrudgingly change into pants and head out. You get a coffee on the way. You're feeling good by the time you reach the supermarket. The store is playing <laughs> Marina and the Diamonds, wow. And you sort of sing along as you make your way down the aisle, squinting a little in the fluorescent light. Supermarkets are weird liminal spaces no matter what, no matter what time of day, empty or crowded. Hmm, well, the baking section looks weirdly barren. Very little sugar, absolutely no yeast, chocolate chips all tossed around like a tornado blew through. How does this even happen? Stay focused. At least there's one bag of flour. You could just snatch it up and... Oh! Instead of meeting the powdery paper of the bag of flour, you feel warm skin beneath your fingers. Looking again, you find a brown hand besides yours on the bag. Nails painted a shiny pink. You both snatch your fingers back at the same time. Oh, drama. Reaching for the same thing of flower, honey. The hand belongs to a short girl who looks... Man, there really is no other word for it. She looks rough. <laughs> Damn. Like you after one of your sleepless nights falling down holes on Bedit name searching yourself. Dark circles curve beneath her eyes, their edges red and puffy. She must have recently been crying. Her hair is pulled back from her forehead, lopsided, like she hadn't bothered to check herself out in the mirror before leaving the house. Honestly, this is how you look most days out of the week. But despite all that, the look in your the look in this girl's eyes is terrifying, to say the very least. She looks at you like she can't believe that you are here, in the flesh, getting in the way of her attempt to grab the last bag of flour. She really dragged this woman. Hey, I need this. I really, really need this. I'm making a cake, okay? You swallow. You would have never you would never presume to tell this girl that she can't have her baking supplies, but actually if if you're making a cake, shouldn't you be using cake flour? 
The girl blinks. What? Well, cake flour is the same as all-purpose flour. It's just sifted finer. You can sift all-purpose flour to that consistency on your own, but who has the time to do that, right? And who even has a sifter in this economy, right? Man, you are babbling. You are just absolutely going. What are you, some sort of chef? Yeah, actually, I am. <laughs> she is shook. Oh. The girl's eyes widen, and she shuts her mouth. Her shoulders slump. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. Obviously, you should take it. I don't really need it. I just wanted to make a cake. Because I'm having a bad day. And obviously, if you need it for work, it's way more important than you that you have it. Yeah... But, but some people need, some people need, some people prefer to bake, right? Like some people prefer to, the entire process of baking rather than just like eating a cake. You know what I mean? <clears throat> God knows I don't need any more sweets. Like that's literally all I've been eating all week. I mean, not all week. I haven't been like this all week. It's just been a really bad day. But okay, uh, you should definitely take the flower, because you need it more than me, because it's like your job. I think I already said that. <laughs> she says all of that in one breath. You're worried that this girl might be having some sort of an episode, and if that's true, you need to get her to a professional as soon as you can, because... Oh boy, are you not equipped to deal with this. <laughs> Honestly, you did not come out here for this sort of situation, especially considering your own mental health has recently been hanging on by a single neuron. But then, she closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. Sorry, that was weird, right? I think I just said a lot of weird shit. She starts to turn away, and before you can stop yourself, you do something wildly out of character. It's just not in your tool set to make other people's problems your own. Look, hey, I'm not trying to get all up in your business or anything. Because that's just not what I'm about, but you don't seem okay. No, seriously, I'm fine. She bites at her lip. <laughs> Who says that? Like, damn. <laughs> Honestly, you don't seem okay. <laughs> Like, damn. Yeah, she cussed her out in her, in her head, and now she's like, well. The store intercom crackles to life a report. Nope. <laughs> the store intercom crackles to life to report a spill on aisle two. You know what? No, I'm not okay. Like I said... I've had a crappy last 24 hours. Like, your boyfriend breaks up with you and then takes your entire friend group with him, level crappy. They even kicked me out of the fucking group chat. Oh, that's shitty. And worst of all, this isn't even the first time that this has happened. This exact scenario. Where the person I'm dating is done with me, and then all the friends I've made in the time that we started dating each other leave too. Even people who were my friends first. They always choose him. Another announcement. Looks like they're still looking for someone to clean up aisle two. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah, sorry. I know I'm being extremely normal right now, just spouting off to some stranger in a grocery store. It's fine. But do I know you from somewhere? You just look familiar. I don't know. Were you maybe friends with my crappy ex and the crappy people that he hangs out with? Oh! My god. I don't have that many friends, IRL. Unless you know an Alex? Alex Reza? The girl shakes her head. 
Maybe she knows Yolanda. Oh, maybe she knows Yolanda. Or, oh, maybe Yolanda? Although I guess I only met Yolanda yesterday, so we really couldn't have mutual friends. The girl is making a face like maybe she does know Yolanda, but she doesn't seem inclined to talk about it. Which is fine, because wow, you really are just standing in the middle of a grocery store, pouring out your hearts to each other like this is a goddamn meat cute. I don't know, I stream sometimes, you know, like, games, whatever. Oh shit, that is what it is. That's how I know you. This girl's voice is totally familiar to you, and so is her hair, and her forehead, and just all the parts of a streamer that you see when you're just casually glancing at your screen when you have their stream on in the background for noise. You've probably heard Ashley's voice more than you have some of your real-life friends, which is pathetic. I like your Apex streams. Haha, <laughs> thanks. Anyway, one of us should probably grab the flower, so... She trails off as both of you turn to stare at the empty space on the shelf next to you. You look down the aisle to where a bald-headed guy with a stoop and a pair of muddy bikes. Did that old-ass man just take our flower? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Looks like he can barely lift it. Rude! Oh my god. The two of you laugh, bonding over making fun of a senior citizen. So rude. For real though, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have wasted all your time babbling like that. If you want, I could give you the money and you could go to another store. I feel like I at least owe you that at this point. You have no idea what she's talking about. Then you realize that she's offering to buy the flower for you. Oh my god, don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. I can just make something else for my stream. I'll do... Sha Shakshua? Shakshuka? Shakshuka. I am so sorry. Please do correct me. I have a bunch of tomatoes about to go bad. Shak... what? You've never had it? It's super good. You should try it. It's like, well, it's mostly just eggs and tomatoes. Which I know sounds kind of weird, but it's great, I promise. Actually, why don't you come back to my place? This escalated quick. Huh? I've been meaning to have a guest on one of my streams for a while. Y'all just met each other. What's... What's going on, liar? And it's fun to teach someone else how to cook. It's not, actually, but you've suddenly realized that you very much don't want to be alone right now, even if that means hanging out with a total stranger. Well, not a total stranger. You do like her streamer voice. How do you know that I need someone to teach me how to cook? Oh, I guess... I'm just kidding. I can't cook for shit. The cake I was planning to make would have turned out terrible. I bake a lot, but it's never that good. But... She folds her arms and tips her head to the side. How do I know you aren't a serial killer? How do I know you aren't a serial killer? We could both be serial killers. Like, that Brangelina movie where they're both assassins who try to kill each other. But with, like, m more being online. Ashley quirks an eyebrow. Well, I, I don't have anything else to do. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Okay. What's up? It's me again, catching up on Naya's noms. Snicker. No comments. Save your crit for the end, please. Yes, ma'am. 
We're making shakshuka today, folks. It's one of the top requested recipes on my Patreon. <laughs> Not Patreon. <laughs> Which is weird, since it's maybe the easiest thing in the world to make. I think maybe the cast iron skillet psychs people out. You turn to your guest, who is all suited up in a spare apron, hair pulled back from her face more cleanly than before. Her skin tone is close enough to yours that you were able to share your foundation, which you know you're not supposed to do, but whatever. As mentioned earlier, you don't have herpes. <laughs> Good to know. First, let me introduce my lovely assistant. This is Ashley. Ashley, say hi to everyone. Hi everyone! I literally just met Ashley an hour ago. This is 100% real and not fake. She's telling the truth. We ran into each other at the grocery store. I know by saying 100% real, not fake, she's made this sound absolutely fake. But it's real. I see some of you in the chat recognize her. That's awesome! Welcome! Glancing at the chat, it's moving faster than it has. Then, nope. <laughs> Glancing at the chat, it's moving faster than it ever has before. Before you went live, before you went live, Ashley shouted you out on all her accounts, and the subscriptions are pouring in almost faster than you can keep up with. For a moment, you lose your train of thought. You're being hit by so much intense social media clout dopamine. You don't know what to do. Uh, anyway, let's make shakshuka. As you can see, it's a lot of simple ingredients. Garlic, of course. Hella tomatoes. I know, someone is going to ask in the comments if canned tomatoes are okay. And usually I'm all about taking every shortcut you can. But this time, it really does need to be actual tomatoes. And you're gonna want to take the seeds out because tomato seeds are bitter. So basically, any tomato is fine, but you want to avoid the more seedy ones like Roma tomatoes. Seedy? That makes the tomato sound sketch as fuck. Seedful? Full of seeds? Whatever, just don't use Roma tomatoes unless you want to suffer. You hear Ashley huff a laugh next to you. You aren't sure if she's laughing at your cool tomato jokes or just at you, babbling worse than you actually do. Or usually do. Unable to help yourself, your eyes flick to the comments. You promised yourself you wouldn't do that, but you're all unsettled from having your usual streaming routine shaken up. Holy shit, that really is... <laughs> XX Ashbun XX. Do you think they actually just met at the grocery store? LOL, of course not. It's just a hook so well. It's just a hook. So we'll all be like, oh my god, amazing. Well then, how the heck did they meet? Oh my god, what if they're dating? You roll your eyes. Y'all need to be normal about this, please. Ashley is my guest. Be cool. You should have known people were going to start shipping the two of you immediately. Your fans are just like that, god bless them. Bitch still has a- oh, not that. No, leave her eyebrows alone. Uh, you flush and yank your eyes away from the screen. This is why you don't read the fucking comments. God, you hope Ashley hasn't seen that. It's true that you don't pluck your eyebrows much, but who has the time? Honestly, who does have the time? You get down to it, showing the best way to decor and seed the tomatoes before scrapping them into a bowl. You saute the garlic, pop open the tomato paste, and line the eggs up in a row. Ashley is a good co-host. She clearly has a lot of experience talking to an audience, which you knew going in, but she responds well to all your cheesy attempts at jokes and makes them better. And she turns out to be a way better cook than she had initially let on. Initially, you just planned to let her slice the bread at the end, but you end up being able to just assign half of it to her. She doesn't get shitty about being bossed around in the kitchen either, which you'd 
been afraid she might. Wow, I have never seen this many tomatoes before in one place. She breaks off abruptly. Huh? I lost you. You say it before you remember that you can't lose her. You're in the same room as her. You can't drop her on a call. Ashley? You turn around and find her staring down at the counter. At first, you think she's messed something up or broken a kitchen implement and is too nervous to tell you on stream. But then you see that she isn't staring at the counter after all. She's staring at the monitor. God, is your silly fanbase acting foolish again? Then you glance at the screen. One person has taken over the comment section. God, did you forget to limit people's ability to post multiple comments? You are such an amateur. Ah! Uh, wow! Not a toxic bitch. Oh, wow. That's why nobody likes her. She's so problematic. You scan it as quickly as you can, lungs tightening up as you read. It's all about Ashley. And none of it is complimentary. In fact, this seems to be a burner account of someone with a personal bone to pick with her. It's just rows after rows of various crimes. She's abusive, she's mean, she's toxic, she's a bully, she's problematic. The person posts a link to a call out post. Alex does his job and gets rid of slanderous comments as fast as he can. And he bans the person, but right away a new account signs in and starts repeating all this slander. <clears throat> Beside you, you feel Ashley getting more and more upset. You don't know what to do. If you shut it down, this will be the second live stream that you've shut down early because of drama. Last time it was just your own personal drama that you made up in your head, but still... <clears throat> Ashley, I'm fine. She's clearly not fine. You spit out some bullshit about having to wrap stuff up early because Ashley has another stream to get to. You're not even sure what you're saying anymore. Then you shut it all down. <clears throat> I am so sorry about all that. You're gonna think I'm a total amateur for this. I really should have made it so that you can't post with a new account. Alex told me to do that like months ago, but I keep putting it off. I'm so sorry. Ashley faces away from you. Her shoulder is shaking. Didn't I tell you that I'm not mad? Why did you shut it down? I didn't ask you to do that. This is your job, isn't it? She whips back towards you, face cont contorted in anger. You take a step back, surprised. How are you supposed to get anywhere with this if you just break down over nothing like this? Oh! You shake your head. I wasn't breaking down or anything like that. I just thought you looked upset. Well, I wasn't okay. She yells so loud that you wince, clutching at your head as pain flares up in the back of your neck. You've been hovering on the edges of a migraine all day and this isn't helping. Ashley's eyes lose their fire for just a moment before flaring back to life. See? That person in there was right. I am awful and toxic. You don't want me in here. She's shouting so loud it rings down off of the ceiling. <clears throat> oh no. <laughs> Honestly, realistically, if someone was yelling at me, I would probably yell back at them. But I feel like that's not gonna help. Should we try to defuse the situation or should we yell back? Y'all y'all choose. Y'all go ahead. Y'all help me out here. I feel like a part of me is inclined to say to just like yell back. Because I feel like that's how I would react realistically as much as i would like to believe that i would try to defuse the situation but i think in this situation i think it's best to def to try to defuse it hey um do you want something to drink you've never been so good you never bleh. you've never been good when someone was having a crisis you're not even good when you're having a crisis 
Turning to your fridge, you take out two bottles of water and pass one over to Ashley. Her eyes are still blazing, but she reaches out and takes the water. She holds it, one hand poised over the cap without opening it. She's looking at the ground. Her, vo her volume is more reasonable, voice trembling at the edges. You realize that if she leaves now, you'll probably never see her again. And okay, it's not like the two of you are besties. You've known her for about two hours, but still, you don't want her to just wander out into the gloomy Saturday with that look on her face. Listen, I'm not gonna pretend I know what's going on with you or like after school special you or whatever, but you seem pretty nice to me until that person rolled in and started being a dickhead. So you can leave if you want, but don't leave because you think I'm going to kick you out or anything, because I'm not. Ashley is still staring at the ground, but something in the set of her shoulders tells you that she's listening. That stuff you were telling, you're telling about sounds pretty heavy. You want to talk about this? Ooh. If you want to talk about it, that's fine, but if you don't if you don't want to, that's also fine. We can just chill. Ashley finally pops the top off, pops the top on her water. That, that sounds good. Yay, we defuse the situation. The two of you clear up the kitchen together, tossing the half-finished shakshuka and ordering takeout instead. It's really more of a curry kind of day, actually. Alex always says that for a professional chef, you sure love ordering food. You say that for someone who works in a bank, he sure loves using ATM machines. He tells you that doesn't actually make any sense, and you tell him to go fuck himself. Your apartment has a dishwasher, but Ashley doesn't use it. She washes, rinses, and dries all the cookware before finding the places in the kitchen where it belongs and putting it away. We did it. We diffused it. Back when you'd first moved in, you'd ignored the dishwasher too. You hadn't grown up with one. Sorry for, you know, freaking the fuck out multiple times. I just wasn't ready for that. It's okay. You take the dish towel from her and start drying while she rinses. Do you have any idea who that person was? The troll? Ashley's mouth does something bitter and complicated. I got a suspicion. No way she'd ever admit to it, though. Someone I used to hang out with, who I know never liked me. And now that I'm not in the group anymore, I'm fair game, you know? Hmm. You don't know, actually. You've never had a falling out with a group. You've never had a group to fall out with. Wow. That's depressing. Sorry it fucked up your stream. Eh, whatever. They can wait. I'll record something and post it later this week. They don't all have to be live. I've been thinking about cutting down on the amount of them... On the amount of them I post anyway. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I do a lot of streaming too and it's about 10 times more exhausting than it should be. You smile. Ashley seems kind of high maintenance, to be perfectly honest, but also like she understands you on a level most people don't. The level of modest internet fame and a following of slightly annoying people who you nevertheless cherish. You don't think you could date Ashley, not that you think she's right when she yelled that she's a terrible person who doesn't deserve love. She's just a little more than you could take right now, but you absolutely wouldn't mind being her friend. That you can do. Oh, hanging out with the mean girl.
That was nice. Well, it wasn't like nice, nice, you know what I mean? Like it was kind of sad. Ooh, Imhari. Let's go. This is date number three for um for Inaya. Let's do it. Hopefully we're gonna have a successful date. I know that you can save the game before you make decisions so that you know you don't screw up, but I kind of wanna just Oh, swooned at the lesbian bar. Ooh, not safe for work. Alcohol suicide mention. Ah, not safe for work. What do you mean? <laughs> Is there anything I can do about that <laughs> for streaming purposes? <laughs> Maybe we don't stream this uh, date. No, I think when they say not safe for work, it's probably like sexual. Not that I don't think, I don't think it's gonna be explicit necessarily. Um. But yeah, maybe we don't do this date because it says not safe for work and I don't know if I wanna... If I wanna get banned... <laughs> Go fishing. <laughs> what? Let's not risk it, yeah. I don't know how to get to the title screen. Oh, that's cool. We can skip to like an ending or whatever. Yeah, there's no like, there's no like censored version. So let's go back to our main menu. And let's start another date. Okay. Who do we want to play as now? We can do, we could play as Malik, manager at Bopeyes, he, him, 26 years old, Ganayan, Man stay in touch with the girls they never should have cheated on and get mad when they file a restraining order. Trash ass mixtape, kill your producer. Or we have Imhari Abdi, a HR specialist, pronouns she, he, 28 years old. Qatari and South African. Bitches love drama in the workplace until it evolves them. Lesbians born after 1994 can't cook. All they do is eat ramen, buy seven wedding rings, eat hot chips, and cry. <laughs> I feel like since we were gonna go on date with Imhari, I think we should play as her. I think that could be fun. So let's just do that. Lesbian rights, hello. Lesbian. Meeting Imhari. Content warnings, divorce. Divorce, babes, divorce. <laughs> Within the soft darkness of sleep, you're wandering through an endless hall. You're dreaming and soon you'll wake up and be thrust into your real life with your real problems. For now, though, you wander. The hallway is empty. There are no doors, no windows, no decorations of any kind. There are only barren walls gliding by as you bring one foot in front of the other. Not this frequency from my phone. You don't know why you're in this hall or what you're looking for only that you are compelled to move forward. 
As you walk, you begin to feel a strange prickle on the back of your neck, as if you're being watched. You begin to walk faster. The walls and floor of the hallway begin to elong elongate, narrowing to a point far off in the distance. That familiar feeling of being watched looms over you, and you try to run from it. You try and try, but as you look down, you see your feet begin to sink through the plain wood of the floor beneath them. The thing seeking you is getting closer. You know this, but you cannot for the life of you continue to move. A gust of hot breath washes over the back of your neck. Your first alarm sounds, shrieking bright into the warm cavern of your early morning consciousness. Do you have to wake up today? Before you open your eyes, you run a mental tally of everything that you need to do to become a human being. Meds come first, then coffee. You crack your eyes open and reach out in the dark towards your bedside table. You thrust your hand over the surface, knocking over em empty yerba mate cans and other assorted bits of trash until you stumble into your medication. Step two of the equation is water. By now your eyes have adjusted to the low light of your bedroom and you can make out the shape of your water bottle on the floor next to your bed. A moment later you're sitting up, swallowing 20 milligrams of Cryvance XR with a mouthful of tepid stale water. Your throat dries as soon as you finish swallowing, so you down the rest of the water despite its rank taste. Let me sip on my water too, by the way. See you soon, Fergie. Thank you for being here. You command the lower half of your body to move, your brain sending desperate directives to your legs and feet. Will today be the day they choose to cooperate on the first try? I'm sad. Evidently not. You spend another few minutes urging your body to obey your mind until a surge of panic jolts you to stand at the sound of your second alarm. Now that you're up, you turn the light on. Your room is chaotic, yes, but you know exactly where everything is. Your fingers start to twitch as your medication kicks in. You need to get moving. The first thing you need to do... Nope. The first thing you do is throw together an outfit. Once your clothes are laid out on your bed, you slip your house shoes on before heading downstairs towards the kitchen. You already set up the coffee machine last night, so all you have to do now is press a button and you're free to start cleaning out one of the many mugs sitting in your sink. You take out your coffee with a splash of cream and enough sugar to make a dentist faint. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. With your cup prepared, you go back upstairs so you can take a shower. You turn the water on to a nearly scalding temperature and quickly drink the rest of your coffee before slipping off your robe and pajamas. After your shower, you wash your face and quickly style your hair. You get dressed in your room, trying to stay mindful of the time. Your third alarm goes off as you pull your socks on. The socks don't match, but at least there's two of them. Now that you're at least somewhat put together, you must complete the heroic task of getting your children ready. J Jalil and Jabari are still sound asleep in their bedroom. You open the door slowly so you don't startle them and flip on the lamp that sits between your their beds. Jabari stirs a little, but both boys remain asleep. You sigh. You might as well let them sleep for a few more minutes while you pick out clothes for them to wear. At four years old, your sons are starting to become quite independent. You suspect that Jabari will object to any clothes that don't resemble the weight and texture of his pajamas and that Jalil will insist on wearing the same color everything because his new favorite thing is colors. You keep this in mind as you paw through their dressers. The noise you've been making causes Jalil to wake up. 
Oh my god, the Among Us shirt, please. Mama? Jalil Abdi, kindergarten student, Imhari and Noor's son. Good morning, my dove. Did you have a good dream? Yeah, mama, I did. Are we going to school today? Not today. You and your brother are going to Mama Noor's house today. You do your best not to sound disappointed when you say it. The hardest part of sharing custody is having to pretend that you're okay with the sharing part. Why don't you wake your brother up? And then you can both tell me about your dreams while we get washed up. Jalil climbs out of the bed and totters over to Jabari. He lays a small hand on his brother's shoulder and gently shakes him until his eyes crack open. Jabari, wake up! We're going to Umi's house today. Jabari Abdi, kindergarten student. Also, Imhari and Noor's son. Jabari blinks in silence for a moment. Jabari, did you know that um, in my dream, you and me were in Mama's car and we all went to... Um, we went to the moon. <laughs> and um, then on the moon, we saw a big bird and... Um, the bird had a car, too, so we had a race in Mama's car with the bird. You watch your sons chat as you finish getting their clothes for the day together. Who won the race, Jahil? Jalil, I'm sorry. I don't know, Mama. I woke up before it was over. Mama, I didn't have a good dream. You walk over to your son and crouch next to his bed. He's sitting up clutching a stuffed kudu that your aunt gave him when he was born. Jalil has his own, a cheetah, that's sitting next to his pillow. I'm so sorry you had a bad dream, my lamb. Would you like to talk about it? In my dream, you were there, mama, and um... You, all, you allow him to take his time, careful not to stop his train of thought. In it, um, you were in a big box and you were stuck. And I was outside the box and I couldn't open it for you. I'm sorry I couldn't help you. I'm so sorry. Aww. His big brown eyes begin to well up with tears. You reach for him and hold him close against your chest. Don't worry, Habibi. Dreams aren't exactly the same as real life. They just tell us things about real life using pictures. And sometimes they don't make sense to us right away. And that's okay. What kinds of dreams do... Nope. What kinds of things do dreams tell me? Well, that depends on the dream. But as soon as you get bigger and bigger and have more and more dreams, you'll have an easier time figuring out what they have to say. Jabari wipes his tears on your shoulder and sighs. Can we have pineapple for breakfast? I want to have oatmeal. Sometimes it shocks you how quickly your kids can change tracks. But then again, they are your sons. You stand and help Jabari get out of bed. Okay, my dears. What do we do before we eat breakfast? We wash away all the sleep. We wash away all the sleep. Aww. You, you pick up their clothes and lead your sons to the bathroom so that, so that you can help them get ready before they get dressed. Then you load their toothbrushes with toothpaste and hand them to them. They stand on step stools in front of the sink, brushing their baby teeth with gusto. A pang of sadness rings through your heart as you watch them. It took time, but you've gotten used to taking care of the boys on your own. Things are certainly more difficult without a partner, but that's a thought that you can't allow yourself to dwell on, at least not in front of them. When Jalil and Jabari are finished brushing their teeth, you help them take off their pajamas so they can put their they can put on their clothes for the day. What do we think? Did I do a good job picking your clothes today? 
Jalil looks at the blue Among Us shirt that he's wearing and down at his blue socks. Jabari rubs his fingers over his sweatpants and soft yellow Minecraft shirt. You hold your breath. I like the colors. I think that um, blue is a really cool color because um, it's the same as the sky and the sky has birds in it and um, I really like those. <laughs> It's soft. <laughs> he gives a soft smile, and that's all you need to know that you've knocked this one out of the park. You guide your children down to the kitchen so you can start preparing their breakfast. You heat some oatmeal on the stove while you slice, slice some pineapple and pour glasses of almond milk. Your own breakfast will probably consist of leftover rice and a couple of eggs once you get back home after dropping the boys off. You imagine yourself later sitting alone at the table picking at food sapped of its flavor while you wish that things were different. If only you could go back. You know there's no use in this particular mental exercise, but you can't stop yourself. If you could do things all over again, what would you change? Would you figure out a home and work balance that's sustainable before it was too late? Would you listen more? Would it have mattered? There are just some things that you can't control, including, it seems, the kind of person you are at a fundamental level. You weren't enough, simple as that, and the amount you've grown and changed since don't count for shit, because no matter what happens, you and Nor are never going to be back, nope, are never going to be together again. Your thoughts are interrupted by a sharp pain in your hand. While you were distracted, it seems you managed to slice through your thumb instead of the fruit in front of you. Shit. You fail to catch yourself before swearing in front of your children. Mama. I'm fine, my dove. I just got a little cut and I'm going to get a bandage for it right now. You do your best to demonstrate proper first aid to your sons. You rinse your bleeding thumb over the faucet and pat it dry with a paper towel before you rummage in the junk drawer for bandages. Once your cut is taken care of, you prepare two bowls of oatmeal with knobs of butter, some crushed pistachios, and a small drizzle of honey, placing some sliced pineapple on the side. You serve your sons their breakfast and join them in the at the table after you get another mug of coffee. Mama, are you okay? Of course I am, I told you. It, it was just a little cut and now it's clean and wrapped up. There's nothing to worry about. Now, keep eating your breakfast. Jalil shoves a heaping spoonful of oatmeal into his mouth. Hey, mister, breakfast isn't a race. You don't need to go so fast. Take your time, or your tummy will be upset with you in the car to Mama Noor's house. You sip your coffee while your sons eat, reminding Jalil to pace himself every now and again. The last thing you want to do is hand off your kid to your ex while he's covered in puke. Mama? What is it, Habibi? You have to admit, sometimes Jabari can be a little unsettling when he stares at you in unblinking silence. Mama, are you okay? I just told you, brother. I just told your brother one cut, one little cut isn't enough to hurt me too badly. Not the cut, Mama. You're sad. Oh. Yeah, Mama. You came in our room and everything got all blue and green and stuff. But, um, not blue like the sky or like water. Blue like, um, like really, really icky blue. You sigh. This is the kind of thing you would, ideally, discuss with Noor. The best option you have, though, is making a long distance call to your auntie Babalwa so she can tell you how best to support your son's gift while also encouraging them to stay out of your business. I guess I'm a little sad today. But that's just because I have to say goodbye to my favorite two people in the whole wide world. I'll be alright, I promise. 
You reach across the table and your sons grab onto your hands. It's okay to be sad sometimes, understand? Your sons nod, although their little faces are still pinched with worry. You stand and walk around to their side of the table. Come on, give mama a big hug. It makes me happy that you both care so much about how I feel. But I want you to make sure that you pay attention to how you feel, okay? You scoop them up into a tight embrace. It takes all you have not to start crying into the tops of their little heads, but you manage to keep it together. I love you, Mama. I love you too, Mama. <laughs> Aw, this is so cute. And I love you both so, so, so much. I love you more than there are stars in the sky. I love you forever, for always. For as long as I'm alive. You two will always be my biggest loves. It's true, despite all the pain and turmoil that comes from remaining in close contact with Noor, you would never in a million years give up on the children you share. In a way, you know it's why you and she couldn't stay together. Jaleel and Jabari simply deserve more from both of you. It's time to go, boys! Jabari, it's your turn to pick the CD today, so think about which one you want while I get the car ready, okay? You let go of your sons so they can finish their breakfast while they eat. You go up back you go back upstairs to make sure that they packed their things sufficiently last night. You and Noor tend to just keep duplicates of certain items, but there are some things that you simply must cart back and forth, such as their special blankets and toys, as well as anything their preschool teachers have given them to take home. After confirming that their essentials are packed away, you slide Jalil's cheetah and Jabari's kudu on top of their things and zip up the bags. You carry them downstairs and out to the trunk of their car, of your car. Then you check the car seats are relatively clean and secured to the back seat. As you do so, your fourth alarm goes off on your phone. Fuck, you linger too long at breakfast and now you're running behind. Your only choices are speeding or arriving at Norse place late, neither of which are great. Your ex-wife being a little annoyed at you is much better than getting pulled over with your kids in the car, you decide. You go back inside to the kitchen where your sons are waiting. Finished with their food, you clear away their dishes and lead them over to the front door where their shoes are waiting. Thankfully, they both wear shoes with velcro rather than laces, so getting them out of the door is a quick process. I also used to love using velcro shoes as a kid. For some reason, when I was a kid, I had a really hard time figuring out how to, like, tie the shoelaces. I, 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 I don't know, for some reason, I just couldn't do it. Like, my parents tried, and I just, I had a hard time, I guess, I don't know. It was just, it was just more fun and easier to do the, to do the, the Velcro. Do you know what CD you want, Jabari? The boys are fastened securely in their back seats, in their car, car seats. Um, I want the one with, um, the orange circles in it. I want the CD with the black and white boxes and the, um, the weird man on it. Jalil, it's Jabari's turn today. You can choose the CD when I pick you up next time, okay? Jalil nods, pouting. You sigh. You really don't have time for this. It's good to take turns and share, Habibi. It would make you sad if you never got to pick the CD, right? That's how Jabari would feel if I skipped his turn today. Jalil nods again, his imminent tantrum averted. I'm sorry, Jabari. I don't want you to be sad. It's okay. Your sons reach across the seat to hold hands as you fasten your seatbelt up front. You turn the car on and insert the CD Jabari chose. Layered vocals flood the car through the speakers, and part of you wishes it was Jalil's turn to pick the music, if only because tender love ballads are the opposite of what you need to hear right now. 
you blink back tears as you put the car in reverse and pull out of your driveway. This is always the hardest part. Jalil and Jabari sing along as best as they can, and you're glad that they're distracted. The drive to Noor's is only around 10 minutes, but they seem to stretch on infinitely ahead of you. It would be simple to turn your car around, to go back home and unload your children and just face the consequences when you're in hell. Would it be worth would it be worth it to hurt Noor in that way? And for what reason? The only people it would hurt are your sons, since, legally speaking, you'd be kidnapping them and that couldn't possibly be good for their development. Maybe it's for the best that you aren't listening to Scott right now. You cut off that train of thought as you pull up in front of Noor's house. She's standing on the porch, hands on her hips, a look of disappointment etched on her face. When is the last time she's looked at any way else when you were around? And still, despite that, you can't help but notice that she's still the most beautiful woman you've ever met. You're late, Imhari. Noor Fahome Abdi, scientist, Imhari's ex-wife and mother of Jalil and Jabari. You help Jalil and Jabari out the car. I'm sorry, you know how getting them out the door can be. It won't happen again. Hi, Umi. Good morning, Umi. Good morning, Habibi. Why don't you come inside and take your shoes off? I'll be right in after I speak to your mama. She opens the front door for the boys and closes it behind them. You were late two weeks ago, too. Don't tell me you're trying to kidnap our children, Imhari. You sputter at the accusation. Are you being serious right now? I was less than five minutes late and you jumped to kidnapping? That's pretty bold, Nor. When is the last time you've spoken to each other without fighting? Just after the boys were born? Before that? Noor takes a deep breath and crosses her arms. Hi, Andara. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to today's bonus stream. We're playing a little bit of uh, Validate Struggling Singles in your area. We just dropped off... Um, our children at our ex-wife's home and there's drama look I don't want to argue with you today I have something to tell you what you aren't moving are you no I'm not moving listen this is important she takes another breath Habibi I your hair stands on end at the term of endearment. You want to scream, don't call me that. You don't get to call me that anymore, but you stay silent. How are you doing, Andara? Hope you're having a nice Tuesday. I've been seeing someone. Their name is Ali, and it's serious. I want to introduce him to Jalil and Jabari this weekend. It's like you've been punched in the gut. Oh! I didn't want to do it without letting you know, but I'm not asking you for permission. You're having a hard time looking at her. I understand. I wish you two the best. You're okay. Kids off school this week, so it's fun. Oh, I see. You turn on your heel and walk back to your car. Noor doesn't call after you, only goes inside to get your children unpacked. Once the door is shut, you fasten your seatbelt and check your mirrors. You check that all four windows are rolled up tightly. And then, you scream. <laughs> Aww. Pineapple for breakfast. Aww.
Let's hopefully have a fun time now, okay? Let's go on a date with Biggs. <clears throat> yeah, I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm glad you're okay. I hope the stream can distract you a little bit. A crash course in friendship. <clears throat> Content warnings. Controlling behavior. Stay safe, everyone. On a typical afternoon, you can be found curled up on your couch, relaxing after a long day of work with a copy of Car Parts magazine. When you don't have your sons to worry about, and the weather is nice, you go out on the back porch and enjoy your weekly allotted cigarette. It's a part of your routine that you look forward to, this hour or two where you focus on yourself and relax. Even when Jalil and Jabari are at home, you still try to honor this part of your day, although sometimes it has to wait until the, after the boys are asleep in bed. Today is only half typical. The boys are home, but not because this is your week to have custody of them, nor called you frantically around noon because a new girl at her lab ruined a sample. Your heart flip-flopped when you heard it. A long time ago, you would have asked her to stay on the line to talk shit about this new girl and how incompetent she is. The two of you would drive your bosses wild with how long you'd stay on the phone with each other while you were on the clock. Back then, your bosses were too scared to look homophobic to really punish you for all the alleged time theft you committed. Now, upper management has taken a few too many diversity trainings, so you couldn't pull off that scam even if you had someone to pull it with. In any case, Noor should be arriving to pick the boys up within the next hour, and until she does, you're going to enjoy your time with them. <clears throat> The three of you are sitting in the living room. Jalil is building a tower of blocks while Jabari draws with crayons on a piece of printer paper. The television is playing one of the boys' favorite programs, Claw Captors, which fills the room with a steady supply of background noise. A commercial plays for the show's tie-in toys, and you brace yourself to be bombarded by your sons begging for plastic imitations of cartoon owls. Instead, you hear an engine backfire loudly outside your house. You wince at the sound and thank yourself for having the ability to maintain your car properly. Your sons seem unbothered by the noise, which you're thankful for. Jalil continues building his block tower while Jabari sits still in front of his unfinished drawing. Mama, someone's coming to our house soon. You look up from your magazine and towards the front door. It's probably Mama Noor coming to pick you up. No. His tone is firm. It isn't uncommon for him to predict an unusual guest's arrival. You try your hardest to remember if you made plans with one of your friends. A moment later, a timid knock comes at your door. Strange. If it is Noor, she'd normally just ring the bell. And if she's going to knock at all, she does so with confidence. You make your way towards the front door. Another knock comes. You unlock the door and pull it open, bracing yourself to once again relinquish your children to your ex-wife. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this a bad time? You quickly try to fix your face. There's no reason to meet this stranger with any kind of animosity. Yet... Animosity yet. I'm sorry. I'm satisfied with my cable and my religion. And I'm already affiliated with a political party. What? I work for... Puss? <laughs> I had to. You launched into your stranger at the door routine too early. The person standing on your porch is dressed in the classic brown uniform Puss delivery drivers wear. Sorry, it's been a long day and I didn't even notice. I don't think I'm expecting anything in the mail. I actually don't have a delivery for your address. My truck backfired outside of your place and now I can't get it to start. I was delivering something to the guy across the street and he said his auntie down the block was good with this kind of stuff. 
I'm assuming you're the auntie in question. You can't help but crack a smile. The boys across the street like to drag race down some of the side streets in the neighborhood, and you fix their cars on the cheap as long as they demonstrate at least some resent some semblance of road safety. One of them must have offered up your services. Ha! Huh, I am. You're a little too old to call me auntie, though. Oh, I'm in Hari. Abdi, it's nice to meet you. You extend your hand to the puss driver, and they shake it. Nice to meet you, Amhari. My name is Biggs Smallson. Well, Biggs, I should be able to take a look at your engine in a few minutes. I just need to wait for my ex to come by to pick up the kids. As you say that, you feel a tug on your legs. You look down to see both of your sons on either side of you, clutching to your pants. Who are you? You have pretty hair. It looks like Mama's when she w when she's too um, mixed up in her head to go to the barber. Hi, are you friends with Mama? <laughs> Shit. You quickly scan the person on your porch. It isn't impossible for them to be trans femme, but based on how they're carrying themselves, you doubt it. In fact, you realize you've been unconsciously using they them to describe him. This obviously isn't your business, but still, there's something about him that that's reminiscent of yourself many years ago, before your egg had been cracked, so to speak. Boys, don't be rude. You look at the person on the porch, half smiling. I'm so sorry about that. There's really only one man who comes around my house, and it usually isn't when the kids are here. Not like a boyfriend or anything like that. We're just friends, and he's just terrible with children, if I'm being honest. Wow, you sure are talking a lot. It's a bad habit of yours that always seems to come up at the worst possible moments. The puss driver cracks an easygoing smile. No worries, I'm not uptight about that kind of thing. He him is alright. He pauses, almost like he's thinking very seriously about what he's going to say next. Yeah, he him is fine. Still, I want to teach my sons to be a little bit more polite to people they meet. Jaleel Jabari, please ask your questions nicely. Hello, my name is Jaleel. My brother is Jabari, and um, are you mama's friend? Hello, I'm Jabari. Do you know Uncle Arihi too? Um, no. I'm actually just getting a favor from your mama. My name is Biggs. It's very nice to meet you both. Your sons each extend a hand in an imitation of your greeting earlier. Biggs allows them to wrap their tiny hands around one of his, and he shakes them delicately. He then checks his watch and the electronic device attached to the hip. Speaking of, I need to deliver another couple of packages. I can come back once I'm done with them. My dolly is busted, so I'm going one at a time. Uh, I was going to say I'll be here when you get back. I can wait here and keep an eye on your truck while you're gone. Sounds good. I'll be back soon. Bye, Jaleel. Bye, Jabari. It was nice to meet you both. Maybe I'll see you again someday. You will. Bye-bye, Auntie Biggs. <laughs> Not Auntie Biggs. You wince, but it doesn't seem like Biggs is bothered by any of that. He laughs and waves goodbye to your sons before leaving to go deliver his last few packages. You shuffle the boys back into the house so that you can resume waiting for Noor. She arrives before Biggs gets back, and a part of you is relieved that you don't have to explain everything to her right away. There's no doubt in your mind that Jal Jaleel and Jabari will tell her all about Biggs on the way back. I appreciate you taking them on such a short notice. I hope it wasn't too much trouble. No, it wasn't any trouble. 
Jalil and Jabari join Noor on the porch. You say your goodbyes and watch as they walk down to the sidewalk, passing Biggs on his way towards the, pro the porch. Hey, I'm all done for the day. Thank you so much for taking a look at the engine. I really appreciate it. It's really no problem. I'm free all afternoon and if I'm being honest, I have a hard time turning down a project. That's awesome. Also, was that your ex? Uh, yeah, that's Noor. She seems, um, fine. Uh, just fine. Anyways, why don't we get started? <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. Before we get into this uh, particular project, I do want to take a little break. I hope that y'all are enjoying today's uh, impromptu stream. I have a little, have my latte with me, and we can proceed on with validate struggling singles in your area. Again, thank you so much to the devs for providing me with a key to cover this game on stream. Ooh. -woo. <laughs> All right, let's continue on this date with Biggs, the puss driver. <laughs> um. You lead Biggs over to your garage, where you keep most of your supplies. Ooh. You're eating some sausage, Andara. Ooh. Hey, I really can't thank you enough for all this. I'm sure you must be pretty busy. It's really no trouble at all. Honestly, once the kids go back to Norse place, I tend to just kind of mope, so this is nice. Shit, that might have been a little too vulnerable for your first time you're really having a conversation with this guy. That's really real. I can only imagine how hard it is. An uneasy silence sits over you two as you open up the hood of Biggs's van. Your palms start to clam up. It's been too long since you've hung out with Ar Arihi because of all of a sudden you feel words bubbling up in your mouth and you can't stop them from frothing over your lips even if you wanted to. I guess it should be getting easier. I mean, we've been divorced before the boys could even walk. So it shouldn't be this hard anymore, right? Being a single mom is difficult. I don't think you should beat yourself up for having a hard time. He's right. You take a deep breath. Your ex seems... Um... Responsible, at least. <laughs> don't mind, Noor. My face is... My face just puts her in a bad mood. There's nothing I can do about it now. You shine your flashlight deep into the recesses of Biggs' engine block. There are a few things that could be making the engine backfire, and you're hoping it's something you're capable of handling yourself. I think... A switch in your brain flips. You forget about Noor. You forget all the... You forget about all the ache caused by your son's absence. You forget that you just pulled yourself from the edge of panic. You are in your element. No, I know I can fix this. You straighten up to deliver the full diagnosis. It looks like your air intake tube is punctured. Lucky for you, I can replace it for you right now. I keep telling my manager he needs to get the van serviced more often. Shit, are you sure it's not too much trouble for you? Really, it's not a problem. I tend to stock up on this part since the boys on this street treat their cars so rough. Oh, it all makes sense now. Is that why the dude down the block said that Auntie Hottie could hook me up? Were those his exact words? God, he makes me sound like a drug dealer. <laughs> Don't worry, I assumed you weren't going to try to sell me any drugs. No offense, but you open your front door too quickly to be a drug dealer. <laughs> You're right about that, I guess. You lead Biggs back to your garage. It's messy in there, but you're not embarrassed about it. It could be worse. Your house could be the dumpster fire instead of your garage. 
If Biggs is put off by the crates full of loose parts stacked haphazardly around the floor, the greasy rags scattered around a small yet ominous puddle of iridescent black motor oil, and the ever-present smell of sweat and rust, he doesn't say anything. I should have a tube that will fit your engine over there. You wander over to where you keep parts that are made out of plastic and rubber. You start digging through a disingre- nope disintegrating cardboard box of a on a shelf until you find the part you need. All right, let's do this. I don't really love I sausage actually a lot of processed meats TM uh kind of give me a bunch of heartburn. So I don't eat sausage as much as I feel like I would like. Because I like hot dogs and stuff like that. Like, I like a sausage in a barbecue type of moment. You know, I'm all, you know, obviously other sausages <laughs> I love also. <laughs> but, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't work well with my, with my heartburn stuff. But when mix on Prezal arrives at the scene, um, everything is fair game. <laughs> but I don't take it like super often. My, my doctor said I, I shouldn't take it like every day or anything like that. So I try to take it like, I feel like twice a week at most, but I feel like I don't do it that often. Potentially twice a week actually. <laughs> Heartburn City. Hi, Em. How's it going? You made sausage, sweet potato mash, and Yorkshire pudding. Ooh, what is Yorkshire pudding? That sounds lovely, though. You've been on Omprazole for about 10 years now. Two, ta two tablets a day. Oh, my God. I uh, I only take one um, in first thing in the morning when I do, and I only take it when I have like maybe if I have like a bad a bad time, like maybe sleeping or maybe like if I had like really hard really bad heartburn like the day before or something. Oh no, Em! I'm sorry to hear that. That's not fun at all. Oh no. I hope that the stream can distract you a little bit from that. I'm so sorry to hear that. You quickly get to work detaching the old tube and installing the new one. When did you learn how to do all of this? My dad and my uncles all worked in the Bjord plant when I was growing up in Dearborn. And it's not like they got paid enough to do more than lease the new cars they were making. So they made sure that the cars they owned outright they owned outright would last as close to forever as a car can. It's a type of battery pudding? What I'm even more confused now. What is a battery pudding? <laughs> In my head, pudding is like dessert. So I'm a little confused. And then they taught me and my cousins how to as well. And I guess the boys on this block remind me of them a little bit. So it's nice to help them how I can. It's weird because I haven't been back to visit in so long, but it's like, I'm not even homesick because it's like I have the same thing, but better here. Oh, batter pudding. <laughs> Not the predictive test. Test? Text. It's made with batter, salt, and pepper, so not sweet. That sounds lovely, though. That sounds really, really lovely. So you did... Okay, so you did the Yorkshire. What does the... What makes the Yorkshire pudding different from just general pudding? Does it have, like, extra ingredients? Does it have, like, any specific things? There you go again, talking like you just broke a lifelong vow of silence. 
It's just that Biggs puts you at ease in a way most men simply cannot. On top of that, it really has been a while since you've really had a conversation with someone outside of work that wasn't about shapes. Word? That's honestly really dope. I'm guessing you'll teach your kids the same when they're older? I absolutely will. For now, it's hard to find time to work on my own projects. They're just a little too young to do activities that, aren't, that they aren't particularly invested in yet, especially ones that involve power tools. How old were you when you started using power tools? Oh, probably around when I was six. <laughs> Jalil and Jabari still have a couple years to go. Until then, it's a full-time job keeping an eye on both of them at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Em. Listen, you don't have to talk about it. We're not gonna intrude on anything. You can just chill if you want and just keep your mind off of things. Hi, Fly. The homophobia of your internet going out as you are about to say hi. Oh my god, that is truly homophobic. How are you, Fly? It's good to see you. Happy Tuesday. Basically, you pour it into a cupcake tray and it makes little hollow puddings. Flat bottom, raised sides, you pour gravy in to make a little pie thing. Oh. Ooh, that sounds lovely. All right. I don't think I've had, I don't think I've had like gravy before, but I'll try it. <laughs> I'll try it. It sounds lovely. I'm looking forward to when they're in school and I can finally talk to other adults again. Well, shit. I think I have an idea that will work out for both of us. What is it? Well, not to make any bold assumptions since we just met, but you said it yourself. You don't spend a lot of time hanging out with other adults. And I want to thank you for helping me out and giving me a legit reason to get some overtime. So, why don't we do both at the same time? You're finished with your work now. Your hands lightly coated in oil and dirt from the inside of the engine. Oh? What would you say... No, what would you say to... <laughs> My brain broke. What would you say to you, me, and the kids all going somewhere together? We can pick something that will be interesting to them. And I'll help you watch them so you can also, you know, talk to another adult. I'm the other adult, in case that wasn't clear. You take a moment to consider the offer. Honestly, that sounds great. Wait, so we're just gonna go on, on his truck? After a few days spent exchanging texts and coordinating schedules, people in, it, be, let me just say this before I continue reading, people in this game are way too outgoing and friendly to strangers. It's like, you just met this person and after having a conversation with them and, and like fixing something in their car, you just fully decide on going on a day trip with them, with your kids? Like, what? <laughs> After a few days spent exchanging texts and coordinating schedules, you two decide to meet at the Jersey, Jersey City Zoo on a sunny Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Hi, Percy. You don't want to ride a rhino at the zoo with someone you met at the grocery store? Weird. <laughs> okay, weird. <laughs> you know... I would probably ride the person. I'm just kidding. Or am I? <laughs> you arrive 10 minutes late, which for you might as well be an hour early. You have your black backpack and a tote bag you got for subscribing to some car magazine years ago. How's it going, Percy? Happy Tuesday. 
uh, wait, what was the... You arrived 10 minutes late, which for you might as well be an hour. You have your black backpack and a tote bag you got for subscribing to some car magazine years ago. Both stuffed nearly to bursting with water and snacks and every miscellaneous thing you could fit in there. Jalil and Jabari each clutch onto one of your hands. This morning, you dress them in matching overalls and bucket hats, just in case you lose one of them and you need to describe their appearances under pressure. It's giving safety. It's giving not being abducted. Yeah, right? <laughs> Hi. Oh, day off. Iconic. Enjoy your day off. What are you up to? Are you going to be doing anything? Are you just going to relax today? You walk towards the entrance, scanning the crowd for Vigs. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Aw, I'm glad you're spending your day off with me. I appreciate that. Doing absolutely nothing and enjoying every second, as you should. <laughs> As you should. I, uh, for some reason, I, l these days I, I don't enjoy the activity of doing nothing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm like, I just stare at my PC and I'm like, I need to do something. I need to do something. I should do something. Not even productive. I'm like, I want to like do something. I want to do something fun. And I, I'm, sometimes it's like literally just like, I'm sad. You know what I mean? Oh my god, it was snowing this morning? Oh yeah. <laughs> Honestly, work. <laughs> Good on you for not moving. I wouldn't either. He's standing off to one side, dressed in casual shorts and a baggy t-shirt. It honestly, it's honestly strange to see him outside of his puss uniform, but it makes sense that he wouldn't be wearing his work clothes when he's off the clock. He waves at you with a wide grin as you approach. Auntie Biggs! Hey! How are the owl boys doing? Anything cool happened back at the nest since I last saw you? Big squats, Biggs squats down so that the boys can get a good grip around his shoulders before he lifts them off the ground to the sound of their, of their giggling. It's a relief that they get along so well. It will make following your itinerary that much easier. Hey, Biggs. Sorry we're a little late. You know how getting kids out of the front door can be. No worries. It isn't that late. And besides, you're here now. Still, I try to be on time as much as I can. It's just that things sometimes uh, get mixed up in the shuffle, you know? Big suddenly takes on an air of aged wisdom, even though you're pretty sure you're at least a year or two older than him. There's nothing wrong with being a few minutes late now and then. You're a good mom, Imhari. The statement is a seemingly simple declaration, one with subjectivity woven through each individual word, and yet, when Big says it, you can't help but feel that maybe, just maybe, he's correct. Thanks, that really means a lot. Don't mention it. For once, you let the silence speak before you stretch on. If Jalil or Jabari want to break it, they're free to do so. Um, Auntie Biggs? And like clockwork, they do. <laughs> I'm a good mom. <laughs> Percy. <laughs> I'm screaming. <laughs> Am I a good mom? Auntie Biggs, do um owl, do do owls live at the zoo? Mama says a lot of birds don't live there because they can fly away, but um Jabari thinks that um there have to be some birds who want to live there since the zoo um doesn't have a roof and they can um play with all the other animals. 
While Jalil batters Biggs with questions about the zoo, you dig through your tote bag for your entrance passes. As an employee of the Jersey City School District, you, your family, and up to five guests per season are allowed free entry into most municipal sites, including the zoo. I haven't been to the zoo in so long. It's a fine benefit, to be sure, but you'd much rather see your coworkers get a raise, or at the very least, better health insurance. <laughs> From now on, I'm only responding to mother. <laughs> oh my god. All right, let's all line up for this for sunscreen. You've already applied SPF to yourself and your kids before you left the house, and even though it hasn't been two hours, it can't hurt to reapply now that you have a few minutes of stillness. On cue, Jalil and Jabari climb out of Biggs' arms and stand next to each other, arms spread wide and eyes clamped shut. Biggs remains still for a moment before slowly emulating the boy's positions. A strange look settles onto his face as he does so. I take a minute. By the way, Percy, I started listening to, to a book. <laughs> I started listening to a book. Are you proud of me? I mean, I've only listened to like maybe 10 minutes of it. But I'm listening to the li the Midnight Library. It's leaving um, Audible Plus, like whatever they call it, like next month. So I was like, ooh, let me read that. <laughs> let me read that. So, um, yeah. Before you launch into your usual sun care routine, you take a breath. Jalil and Jabari are in front of you, their little arms outstretched and their eyes clamped tight. They are both five years old and physically incapable of putting sunscreen on themselves. Uh, these things are not true of Biggs. Oh, sorry Biggs, I guess I forgot about the whole talking to other adults thing. I don't need to put your sunscreen on for you if you don't want me to. Biggs immediately puts his hands down and it occurs to you that, yeah, it is kind of weird for a grown woman to platonically apply sunscreen to a grown man without establishing that that's okay first. No worries, I can put it on myself, but I mean, I get how it can be kind of difficult to get yourself out of parent mode, huh? Yeah, very good book. Yeah, so far, I, I, I feel like I'm going to be into it. The, the themes are a bit, you know, with like mental health stuff. Sometimes it's like a little like, hmm, this is, um, this is a lot. Um, but it, I'm, I'm liking it so far. I'm still super, super early on. But I think I'm going to like it. <laughs> I'm the su you're the sunscreen applier for everyone around you. <laughs> I feel like yeah, I need um I need to be reminded of that for sure. Last time I went out in the sun, actually, well, oh yeah, I didn't put sunscreen on this when I went to the city, so my bad. And I didn't either when we went to visit my brother and his wife, and I got sunburnt then so you know one day I'll learn tell me about it I'll hand over the spray once I'm done with these little guys Jalil and Jabari wait patiently for you to spray their bodies with SPF 30 when you're done you pass the can over to Biggs while you rub two tablespoons of E nope Two tablespoons each of SPF 45 special formula for sensitive skin sunscreen onto their faces and necks. You move on to yourself when Biggs is finished, and soon after you can f you feel confident that you you're sufficiently protected from the sun. Auntie Biggs, um, Mama says that um, <laughs> not our poor little lobster. Um, 
that um, the sun is our friend. And she, um, sometimes she hugs us too hard. <laughs> but it isn't on purpose. And that's why we have to wear sunscreen all, all the time. Because if you don't, you can get sick. You smile as your sons recount your explanation to him. You strive to strike strive to strike a balance between outright lying to your children about this about the way the world works and confusing them with overly detailed answers that only lead to more questions while the boys proceed to talk at him biggs turns to you with an attentive look so i know you said when we were planning this that you like to have a game plan so i was thinking we could do a loop around the zoo and take turns carrying the boys if they get tired of walking it occurs to you that Biggs has put almost as much thought into this as you have. Not quite the same amount. He isn't legally or morally responsible for your son's safety, but he must have gotten close to your sons. You need to lighten up a little. That, or you've been hanging out with Arihi too much. I was actually thinking we could... I was actually thinking we do the same thing. Ugh, our minds. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's get going. Yeah, it was bad, Percy. It was bad. I got sunburnt. And it took me, like, at least a week to recover. <laughs> yeah, the Minecraft and Among Us shirt. <laughs> Not that, not the tiger cage. The four of you walk up to the entrance to the zoo and step into the moderately sized line. Auntie Biggs, um, what do you think we'll see first? I don't know, what do you want to see first? Um, I, um, I want to see a bird. <laughs> What kind of bird, my lamb? Jabari falls into contemplative silence. There are so many birds after all. Your group reaches the ticket window and you slide your passes through the hole in the partition glass. Oh, oh wow. Look at this clerk. Your fingers brush against the clerk's as she, a khaki clad woman with a visibly self administered haircut reaches for your passes and her entire face lights up with a blush so intense it looks purple thanks have a great rest of your day reflexively you shoot a wink at her as you walk away oh okay mr smooth i see you what you totally made that ticket girl's whole life if she wasn't gay this morning, well, she is now. <laughs> Please. He gives you a playful shove and you laugh. Oh, come on. It wasn't that much. Sure, sure. Keep saying that. You're about to have all the zoo stuff eating out your hand if you keep it up. Ha. That's cute. You return his playful shove and continue walking into the zoo. A large plaza stretches before you. There's a round, regal-looking building with a glass-domed roof immediately in front of you. Why don't we go in there first? Sounds good to me. The door to the building opens on a cool stone lobby decorated with plaques celebrating the zoo's conservation efforts. Further ahead are two glass doors staffed by an attendant. The attendant leads you all into a vestibule and scans the second set of doors before allowing you to enter the exhibit. The room is round, lined floor to ceiling with climbing vines. Pools of clear water line the bases of the walls, and another pool sits in the center of the floor. It's near exploding with water lilies and palms and other tropical flora. Hundreds of butterflies zip around the space. 
flitting between flowers and dishes of nectar on the walls and colorful, colorful t-shirts. Mama, there are so many. His eyes grow wide with amazement as a butterfly lands on his outstretched hand. Be gentle, my lamb. Butterflies are very fragile. Your sons slowly wander around the room. The space is small enough that you can keep your eyes on them easily, even when they aren't directly next to you. Jabari and Jaleel wander over to the pool in the center of the room and peer at a butterfly with brilliant blue wings resting on a water lily. They stand transfixed at the edge of the water as the butterfly slowly opens and closes its wings. You look over to Biggs and notice that a few butterflies have landed in his hair. Biggs, stand still for a second. You pull out your phone and snap a picture before Biggs has a chance to move. Oh, okay. Wow, look at that. Now that's a profile pic. Looking good. Check it out. Nice. But I think Jabari has, be be has me beat. You turn to look at where Biggs is pointing. Jabari is standing still with both arms held in front of him. Dozens of colorful butterflies rest on him, decorating his arms, shoulders, and the top of his head. Jaleel stands beside his brother, uncharacteristically still, as he observes the gentle flap of the colorful wings before him. You quickly pull out your phone so that you can capture the moment, making a note to have it printed so you can send copies to your mom and to your aunt Babalwa. The butterflies leave after a few moments when Jabari starts to get tired of standing so still. Goodbye, my friends! Once you're sure there are no lingering passengers on either of your sons, you usher them towards a door in the back of the room. Much like the one you used to enter the room, this door is staffed by an attendant who makes sure that no butterflies are escaping before allowing you to pass into the next part of the building. That was cute. The previous room was pretty warm, but the next one is so humid you can almost see the moisture in the air. Tropical plants and bodies of water surround a roped-off walkway that weaves through the large space. The air is heavy with the distinct smell with the distinct smell of multiple birds in one room. Caws and squawks fill the place, bouncing off of the walls, creating a symphony of nature that rumbles through your entire body. Mama, look! Jaleel points a finger at a medium-sized bird bobbing around in the water feature directly in front of you. The bird's feathers are a brilliant red, so bright it's almost neon. It stands in perfect stillness, its long beak dipped below the surface of the water that goes up to its spindly knees. You look around for a placard so that you can tell him what kind of bird this is. It takes a moment because the birds are flying fle freely around, but eventually you find it. That one is called a Scarlet Ibis. It's from South America and it eats bugs. Is um South America um, where Granny is from? No, my lamb. You, your Granny is from South Africa, not South America. Yeah, Jabari, and Papa Abdul is from Qatar, and Umi is from Palestine. Oh, okay. Is South America near Jersey City? <laughs> no, it's very far away. There are lots of different birds there, though. You continue answering your son's questions about geography, while Biggs helps you shuffle them outside of the building and towards other parts of the zoo. You walk down carefully manicured paths, stopping every so often so the boys can drink water and eat a quick snack. <laughs> the boys ooh and ah inside the amphibian building, complain about being cold inside the penguin house, and stand stunned, if not a little fearful, at the extensive reptile room. Hmm. 
Eventually, you stop to rest in front of the lake in the middle of the zoo where swans and beavers swim beneath the rush of a large fountain. The only snack I'd go for is Biggs. <laughs> Correct. You can't help but register how pleasant all of this is. It isn't that you don't love your sons. You love them more than anything or anyone on this wretched earth. You just haven't had an opportunity to spend time with them and another adult in... Well, things fell apart with Nor long before you could actually parent together. With Biggs, it isn't exactly how you imagined this kind of thing with Nor, or with any other woman you've dated for that matter, but it's nice in a way that you truly hadn't anticipated. This is great, Biggs. Thank you again for suggesting we get together. Hell yeah, your kids are great, and you're pretty cool if you don't mind me saying so. Well, it's certainly easier to be cool when I'm not keeping track of two kids. I get that. My big sister Amber runs a daycare and she's always talking about how hard it is for her to switch off her adult supervision, supervision mode. You have a sister? Un unbidden, unbidden? You imagine what she might look like. You picture someone who looks just like Biggs, only with that indescribable energy that women have regardless of something as fickle and mutable as biology. Yeah, I'm the youngest of three. There's Hugh, Amber, and me, the small sons. You need to learn more about his about this sister. Ask about let's let's ask about Amber. Tell me more about Amber. What is she like? I mean, we have pretty similar personalities. She's really supportive. She's, uh, she's really supportive, nice, you know, stuff like that. Uh-huh. Is she like, you know... I mean, her coming out as bi when I was a kid definitely helped me figure that out about myself. Like, it's one thing to have your family accept you and tolerate you, but it's totally different than having them actually understand how you feel. So yeah, having Amber there for me. You cut him off before he can finish. Oh? Is she single? You know... <laughs> is she... you know... You know, I really wish you hadn't asked me that. Oh? Like... Is the most important thing about me to you the fact that I have a sister who you might be attracted to? Is there a way for you to admit that he has a point without admitting you were being an asshole? Do you even need to admit something that both of you already know? <laughs> this woman has the scent in her nostrils and she's not letting you go, please. Shit, I'm sorry, Biggs. I should have been more thoughtful. Yeah, you should have. He takes a deep, shaking breath. I know I'm being really aggro, and it probably isn't even that deep, but people are always picking Amber over me, and I guess I'm just more sensitive to it. I mean, you haven't even met her, and she's still more interesting to you than I am. It honestly really sucks. It isn't often that another person takes the time to tell you about yourself like this. Yeah, you're right. That does really, really suck. I don't know what else to say except that I'm sorry and that I'll be more considerate to you. Thanks, Imhari. Oh no! <laughs> Our flop Tina era. You lead your sons towards a path that spirals below the ground. Auntie Biggs, what do you think is down there? I'm not sure, but I bet we'll find out pretty soon, won't we? Your group enters a space meant to evoke the atmosphere of a frozen cave. The walkways lead through the cave and wind underneath an immense salt water pool designed for the enrichment of polar bears. 
You follow the flow of people towards a glass-domed tunnel that runs beneath the pool. Benches line the tunnel so that people can stop and take a rest or take pictures. I'm not sure. Probably my sister Amber since your mom won't shut up about her. <laughs> stop. You'd be so petty. Oh my god. Yeah, it was kind of a shitty thing to do, huh? I didn't even think about it. Mama, look! A baby! You look over to where Jabari is pointing. Jaleel is kneeling on a bench a few steps ahead, his gaze locked on a polar bear cub who looks equally fascinated with Jaleel. Jabari, go over by your brother so I can take a nice picture for your aunties. I can take it if... I can take it. You should be in the picture too, Imhari. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, let's agree. Okay. Yeah, you can take it. You have a hard time putting it into words, but... Somehow, allowing Bix to complete a task that you had already decided you were going to do makes you want to rip all your hair out. All your hair out. You're sure you didn't dis You're sure you didn't disguise the strain in your voice. Still, you walk over to your sons and kneel beside them. Imhari, this is going to look amazing. You don't understand why this all feels so wrong. On an intellectual level, you understand that this isn't a big deal at all. And yet, after an afternoon full of too many smells and sounds and everything, losing control over this one little thing might just push you over the edge. You clench your jaw and begin clicking your tongue against the roof of your mouth in an attempt to channel some of the excess energy that has begun coursing through you. Biggs, give me a sec before you take the picture. Sure. Are you good? Guess that's why I'm Biggs and she's Amber. Even in the alphabet, she comes before me. Stop. <laughs> I'll get back to you on that one. You know that you can't rush yourself into calming down or you'll only make things worse. It's just a picture. It'll be over in a second. You take in a shaking breath and turn so that the profile stands out. You put you put your arms around your sons so that they're in frame and covering the vast majority of your body. Imhari, don't get startled, but you should look up right now. Part of you wants to scream at him to not tell you what to do, but you manage to stop yourself. You grit your teeth and look up. Aww, that's a cute picture. The polar bear cub is still hovering in the water, separated from your sons by inches of pexy glass. Above it, you see an adult bear swimming protectively, almost mirroring the hold you have over your sons with her energy. <laughs> yes, I got the picture. And it hits you. That wouldn't have gotten... Nope, I can't read. And it hits you that you wouldn't have gotten to see something like this if you hadn't let Biggs take the picture, if you hadn't agreed to allow an acquaintance to spend a day with you and your sons, if you hadn't opened your door to a stranger in need. You stand up, bidding farewell to the mother bear and her cub who swim away at a relaxed pace. You take your sons by their hands and walk back over to Biggs. Are you sure you're good? You seem a little tense. Well, kind of. I guess it's hard for me to change my plans, even when it's something small. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It's cool that you managed to let go a little bit. The picture turned out really beautiful. Thanks for that. I really mean it. And please send that to me so I can send it to my mother. Of course. I'll send it right now. Your phone buzzes with an incoming text containing the picture. Before you open it though, an idea occurs to you. <laughs> Are you sure you're good? You want me to FaceTime Amber? <laughs> Stop. 
You really would be petty, huh? Biggs, can I ask you something strange? Go for it. Would you say you make a good wingman? Of course Biggs would make a good wingman. You don't even have to ask. Friends like him are one in a million. This is a weird question to ask. Out of nowhere. You're, you've only known him for a few days, but it feels like you've been friends with him all your life. He laughs before he responds. It's contagious, so you laugh too. Depends. I don't think the zoo would be the ideal place to look for a partner. Biggs hefts Jaleel up on his back, and Jabari curls his small hand around your own. You didn't think a million years you would befriend someone like Biggs. He's someone you can depend on that is also fantastic with your kids. It would be a crime if you didn't treat him to drinks later at your favorite club, a spot that you know he'd love. You're vibrating at the thought. I've got a certain bar in mind. It's important to you that your friendship with Biggs doesn't revolve completely around your kids. It's fine, you can do this. You can ask your friends to hang out. You can be normal. You don't have to plan out everything in your head before it happens. You can go to the bar and let Biggs do his thing and you do your thing and you both will still be good friends at the end of the night. Of course, just say when and where and just say when and where. That's the sentence. She got mad at this man for offering to take a picture right after she tried to jump his sister's bones sight unseen. <laughs> she deserves petty. Stop. <laughs> a friend that will follow you to the ends of the earth. That's Biggs. And you will not smother him and ruin his friendship. This you promise. Aww. Normalist mom at the zoo. That's cute. <laughs> that was really cute. Ooh. Oh, I'm assuming this is gonna be... This is gonna be not safe for work, because... When we did Anaya's perspective, it said not safe for work, so we shan't. We shan't. We ought not to. Um, that was really nice. Um, I think, though, um, I'm going to wrap up validate for today it is a lot of reading um and i'm my voice is getting a little tired from all the reading so i think i'm gonna wrap up validate struggling singles in your area